could Arthur Blank's business acumen be the key to bringing Kirk Cousins to Atlanta? You are Locked On Falcons, your daily Atlanta Falcons podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back, everyone, to another illustrious episode of the Locked On Falcons podcast, your daily Atlanta Falcons podcast, part of Locked On Sports Atlanta, your team every day. And today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 bucks if your bet wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On to get started. And if you do not know me, I'm your very humble host, Aaron Freeman, a.k.a. Sirius Black, a.k.a. Mr. Drew, a.k.a. the Jolly Green Giant, a.k.a. Mr. a.k.a. Been covering the Falcons for far too long at falcfans.com, R.I.P. And I appreciate each and every one of you that is an everydayer of this podcast. Make sure. You follow in their footsteps and make this podcast your first listen or first watch of the day by subscribing or following for free on YouTube or wherever you listen to podcasts. So today's episode, my guest is Corey Woodruff of the Falcoholic and for the win. Uh, he'll be telling us some insight he had talking with Kirk Cousins last month in an interview uh, where potentially Kirk Cousins interest in businesses that may or may not be related to Arthur Blank's businesses could be a potential selling point for him. So as well as later in the episode, we will talk with Corey about his thoughts on this Raheem Morris led coaching staff, as well as some sort of sleeper needs under the radar needs for the Atlanta Falcons. So we'll jump into that conversation with Corey Woodruff right now. Welcome back to another illustrious episode of the Locked On Falcons podcast with another illustrious guest. He is none other than Corey Woodruff, who occasionally covers the Falcons over at the Falcoholic. But you can find most of his online content at For The Win, one of the many USA Today websites. Corey, my friend, welcome back to Locked On Falcons. Thank you for having me, Aaron. I'm glad to glad to be back. I think the last time we talked... Desmond Ritter had just gotten benched for Taylor Heineke, and we were wondering if the Heineke movement would work. Well, which just, time? Which time, Corey? The, that was the first it, time. Yeah, okay. That's when we said that was going to be a bad idea, and we yeah. knew that was going to be a bad idea, and then it ended up being a bad idea. So it's just you yeah. know, it happened so often last year that it was just yeah. hard to keep them all straight. But uh, yeah. you know, we we moved past you know the sadness of the 2023 Falcon season and moving ahead to the Hopefully, non sadness, happiness. Let's say, yeah. Uh, I, you know, I, I said non sadness because as a Falcon fan, I don't understand what the opposite word of sadness is because I've never experienced it. But Acceptance. Um, it's like you know. kind of like sadness, but it's like more like resigned, I guess. But the happiness, hopefully, of the upcoming twenty twenty four season, and of course, a big question mark is going to be the quarterback position. And one player that you know many people have speculated, including yours truly, Aaron Freeman here, the very humble host of this illustrious podcast, uh, one of those quarterbacks that could be an Atlanta Falcon in 2024 is Kirk Cousins. Now, here on Locked on Falcons, we spend a lot of time talking about like scheme fit and whatnot. And so, you know, we tend to focus on like, hey, you know, Kirk Cousins has spent like 90% of his career playing in a derivative or direct um version of a Kyle Shanahan or Sean McVay offense, and that makes him a, a clear-cut fit for a Zach Robinson offense, which presumably will be a derivative of a McVay offense. But, you know, Corey, you have an interesting insight into Kirk Cousins potentially coming to Atlanta because you spoke with Kirk Cousins. You interviewed him last month, and he has an interesting potential connection not only for, from a playing standpoint, but potentially a post-career standpoint that could make Atlanta and particularly the ownership in Atlanta particularly attractive. So I'll give you the floor and, and you can break that down as you want. Yeah. So I talked to Kirk. He did not tell me where he was going. I didn't try asking. It was kind of one of those things where the more I've done interviews, it's like, if you think about asking the one thing everybody wants to know, he's not going to tell you, or they're not going to tell you. It's just like clear cut, like, you know, he'll, he'll come up with like a very nice gregarious answer that says absolutely nothing. So um, but one of the interesting things that I um, noticed when I was talking with him that I when I got the answer, I didn't think anything of it at the time. 
Um, and again, this is kind of like we're connecting dots here. This is what we do in February. Um, is that he mentioned when I talked to him, I asked him about his favorite books. I don't know if you've seen the quarterback show on Netflix. He's a Barnes and Noble guy. He goes, he likes to read. Um, so I was kind of curious, like, all right, so what, what are your favorite books? And he mentioned that um, at the time we talked last month, um, he was reading uh, the biography of Bernie Marcus, who is one of the co-founders of Home Depot. Um, and if you know anything about Home Depot, you know, there's another guy that also helped found it, who's, you know, Arthur Blank and is the owner of the Falcons. And again, that could have just been a giant coincidence where he just wanted to read Bernie Marcus's biography, which, hey, more power to you. I'm sure it's an interesting story. But um, one of the things that, you know, Kirk talked about is that he's really interested in business. He's really interested in entrepreneurship. He likes reading about it and studying about it. Um, and one of the things that's been talked about over the years is just how savvy he works his contracts. Um, like he got a fully guaranteed deal with the Minnesota Vikings the last time he signed with them. Like he's always been very intently focused on making sure that like he gets the best deal for himself. Um, and it makes me think again, he'll be 36 this year. Like he's, you know, he's not necessarily like done, obviously we wouldn't be talking about him if he was, but he is getting to that point where I'm sure the future of his career is in his brain. And it does make me wonder if his next up now, obviously he's going to be looking for a, I think a lucrative deal because it's probably going to be the last time he really reaches free agency. Um, negotiates a contract and really is able to maximize his worth. Um, and he, that seems to be a pretty big priority. Um, this is just me kind of spitballing, but he sounds like a guy who would probably like to go into business when his career is over, who would like to really set himself up as somebody who's really investing in things. And now I think there's a lot of things he could do. He could go into media. He could, you know, become a coach. Like obviously these guys usually have a good option on the table. They need one, but everything that kind of makes me think is like, you know, like we saw Calais Campbell sign with the Falcons last year, partly because Arthur Blank wanted him to, you know, he would be active in helping him with his off-field initiatives. And I, you know, if this is something the Falcons would be interested in, which, you know, who knows, we're in, you know, we'll, we'll know soon enough, probably in the next couple of weeks, what they want to do. But, you know, there's probably opportunity for Kirk Cousins in Atlanta past the time he plays. And again, the people have said his wife's from the area, and, you know, and there's really nothing tangible that links him to Atlanta right now outside of just like the the ideas that people have about okay this might work here this might work there we're all speculating this is just what you do at this time of year but I do think that Atlanta will be able to offer him a lot of what he may want now and later right like I think that if you're going for Kirk Cousins you are probably comfortable with the fact that you're going to be paying him a lot of money um, like, I don't think he's going to take a hometown discount if that even can qualify with the Falcons just because his wife is from the area. Like, he's going to want to be properly compensated. Um, I think that he's going to want to probably, you know, have the the weaponry that Atlanta has, right? Like, you, you want to have the offensive line and that stability, a, a system he'll feel comfortable in, sure. But, you know, maybe in like a hypothetical sense, what if he's curious about what Arthur Blank could offer him and that system could offer him after his playing days, right? Like, is there a way that he could become an investor in the organization? Is there a way that Blank could help him have connections to kind of start things in a way afterward, right? So, you know, I think the Falcons could go a lot of directions at quarterback this offseason. I think the Fields thing, you know, Justin Fields is very, you know, feels like a very legitimate possibility um, for a lot of reasons. Um, and, you know, Kirk Cousins, though, I think if you're looking for any quarterback in any situation that gives them the highest floor right now, which I think will be important, I think it's going to be this guy, right? Like, even if he's coming off an Achilles, um, what he's going to be able to offer them on the field is going to be pretty, you know, pretty meaningful legitimacy out the gate, um, you know, if everything goes right. So that was kind of the one takeaway from that interview that as I kind of thought in the weeks after, I was like, hmm, oh, what? That's interesting. And I think that if you're thinking about what type of quarterback the Falcons would want, you know, we, we don't know. We don't have any indication right now about what the Falcons would want. But if you're thinking about a player that might want the Falcons, Kirk Cousins would make sense in that regard. So I think that, you know, the speculation process will continue until we hear something out of the combine, perhaps. But like, I, I do think that there needs, and again, there's been plenty of people making these connections, um, but I do think that there are 
meaningful reasons to where this could be a possibility. I mean, obviously, we'll see if he resigns in Minnesota. But, you know, if, if he does reach free agency and the Falcons haven't made a trade for Fields and or haven't made like a move up in the draft of some sort, I think that this could be a very possible situation. And I think that it will offer Kirk Cousins a lot more than what he would have on the field, which I think will be more important to him at this stage in his career than it was when he like negotiated that deal with the Vikings uh, back when he first signed with them. Hearing you talk about sort of Kirk Cousins and, and the Arthur Blank connection, it, it reminds me of way, way, way back in the day, uh, going back now about 20 years, uh, when Arthur Blank first bought the team. And whenever the Falcons went into free agency and they had like their their guys that they wanted to sign, they would always land those guys because they basically like Arthur Blank would use whatever, you know, his business acumen, his sales pitch ability and basically sell every single free agent on being an Atlanta Falcon. I remember uh, Rod Coleman and Michael Turner and, and, and you mentioned the Calais Campbell thing. And so I do think if the Falcons do have their eyes set on Kirk Cousins, Arthur Blank will be able to make that pitch to get him here to Atlanta. So that's going to be fascinating to watch, but we will leave the Kirk Cousins conversation aside on today's episode. I'm sure we'll talk quite a bit more about Kirk Cousins over the next three, four weeks uh, in the lead up to free agency here on this illustrious podcast. But I want to get Corey's thoughts on the new coaching hire and Raheem Morse and what his coaching staff will bring to Atlanta. And we'll get into that, guys, as we continue today's Locked on Falcons. Now, football season might be over, and that means basketball season is going strong, and that means you can get buckets with your first bet at FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 bucks if your first bet wins, and you can bet on your favorite NBA, NCAA teams, and players with quick bets, live same-game parlays, exclusive player props, all that and more, and it's not just basketball that you can bet on you can bet on football nfl draft props available at FanDuel, or you can you can bet on baseball world series props if you're feeling good about the braves right plus 450 right now to uh you know win the world series second best odds on FanDuel sportsbook so go check it out find whatever your favorite bet is going to be by visiting fanduel.com slash locked on to sign up that's fanduel.com slash locked on to shoot your shot FanDuel is an official sportsbook partner of the MBA. So we are going to continue this conversation with Corey Woodruff coming up. But before we get there, guys, I do want to plug the Locked On Sports Today 24-7 streaming channel right here on YouTube, the first of its kind, giving you all the local expertise that Locked On provides, as well as the biggest headlines, the biggest stories in the national shows and all the biggest leagues across the world. And if you're looking for more local flavor, check out Locked On Sports Atlanta's 24-7 streaming channel available on YouTube as well. I'm just curious, Corey, what are your thoughts on this coaching staff? You know, not only the hiring of Raheem Morris, but the thoughts on the coaching staff that he's put together so far. You know, I think that I'm pretty bullish. I I, I really, really like the what it means to have Raheem Morris here, right? Because like, I think that, you know, I was one of the folks that was trying to sell myself on the Belichick thing. And I was trying to like find the silver lining. And then every time I would listen to Aaron, it would be like, no, don't do it. It's a cliff. Don't go off that cliff. You know, it's just, it's just, it's not going to go well. And I try to be like, you know, I love Aaron. I respect his opinion so much. I think he brings up a lot of great points. But maybe it would work, you know? It's like that Arrested Development thing where it's like, well, it hasn't worked for these people, but maybe it'll work for us. It's yeah. like, that's what I kind of thought. Like, maybe it'll work here, even though it hadn't worked recently. But I think that Raheem Morris is, again, I don't know if you can say that coaching hires are safe. Like, I don't even think Jim Harbaugh is like a safe hire. I think all of these coaching hires have the potential to be volatile in their own ways. Um, but I think that Raheem Morris is a really good fit for where the Falcons are and what they need. Um, he seems to be a really strong culture builder. He's someone who, like people have said, he understands the building. He has coached some of the players on the roster. He comes very recommended from a lot of really smart people in the NFL. And like, it, it feels like he really wants to be here, right? Like, I think one of the vibes that you kind of got from him is like the same vibe when Dan Campbell was hired with the Detroit Lions, is that there seemed to be a really – 
strong interest in being a part of this specific franchise. Um, like, I think that very credibly, you can believe Raheem Morris saying, like, I want to be an Atlanta Falcons head coach. Like, I, I believe that. Like, it seems like it's very credible to him. Like, you don't normally hear a coach say it's important to me to have, like, ex-owner lift the Lombardi and, you know, after a Super Bowl celebration or whatever, right? Like, that's not, you know, you'll hear, like, we want to win a Super Bowl. But hearing that specifically, knowing his history with the franchise, knowing all of the things that he's been a part of in the team. And, again, he was a part of the Super Bowl loss. And I think that that matters, too, because while, you know, a lot of the new people that come in don't have that emotional connection to that moment, he will. And I think that, you know, the Zach Robinson hire is interesting and has a lot of, you know, good things I think that could come with it. I think the Jimmy Lake hire is interesting. You know, I think his time at Washington as a head coach was a little worrisome in some ways, but he's not going to be asked to be in that big front facing role. So maybe that's more kind of aligned with where his, you know, skill set lies as a defensive play caller. But, um, you know, I think that there is plenty of reason for optimism. Um, will it work? I, I'm not sure. These are not straight across processes okay like again once you get to the field once you get to free agency once you get to the draft and you kind of build on these for the next couple of years that's where these hires really gain their meaning um but obviously the quarterback situation is going to weigh heavily on this i think that the roster still needs some work like i i don't like i think the falcons are not as bad as you think they could be but they're not as good as you think they are either um i think that the quarterback away mentality is incorrect uh, i think that there are still parts and pieces that this team needs to be able to meaningly contend um but i i like what they've done i think that they've built a good staff i think that they've gotten some good experience on both sides of the ball um but you know we'll have to see i mean there's all you can do right now is window shop all you can do is kind of sketch out how you think this is going to go how you think this player will fit into this situation and it'll be the same with the quarterback it'll be the same with the free agency and the draft like there are very few sure things i i think this is an organization that is expressing a lot of urgency and that could go either way and they're not an, they're, they don't seem like an organization that wants to wait a long time to get where they want to go, which to me adds more support for the idea of a Kirk Cousins or a Justin Fields. They want someone or even a Baker Mayfield and the odd chance he doesn't stick around in Tampa Bay. Like they want to have someone who has done this before. So I think that while like everybody wants the shiny rookie quarterback, and I'm sure that they are looking at these guys and studying them heavily and seeing what it would take to get up if they really like one of them. But, I think that like this is not a team that wants to look at themselves as a seven and ten stuck in the mud program. Like they, they don't want to view themselves that way. So I think they hired someone who doesn't view them in that light, right? Like they may have talked to guys who were like, "Yeah, you're two three years away, but we'll make it work." Like I'm pretty sure that winning now is going to be the internal expectation. So it's just like you, we we don't know how any of this is going to process. So I think with this coaching staff, like I'm I'm optimistic about what they've done. I think it can work. And I think that's probably the most important thing to say in February. Yeah. I think it's all fair. It's all fair, but yeah, we'll, we'll see how it all plays out. Like I'm, I'm a big believer that the outcomes of football games are what decide things. And, and what, what decides the outcomes of football games is like, you know, do you have a quarterback? Can you run the mm -hmm. football? Can you block? Can you tackle? And all those various things. And as much as I like the Raheem Morris hire, he was the, the guy I hoped that they would hire. I like the coaching staff. He like, none of that guarantees that the Falcons are going to be able to do all those things. And all of the, you know, it's all part of the big sort of process of putting together a successful team and yep. they go out there and sign the right free agents. They got to go out and draft the right players. They got to do all that stuff. It's all part of the off season process before we get to September. So we'll, we'll see how it all works out for Raheem Morris, but given it's the off season, let's talk a little bit more about some of those team needs and some potential needs that may be flying under the radar. And we'll pick that with Corey Woodruff coming up on today's Locked on Falcons. Last little tidbits I want to pick your brain on, Corey, is, um, you know, what is the biggest or what is a position that you look at that you think is a need that isn't necessarily getting talked about? So what, what's sort of a sleeper under the radar sort of area that you would like to see this team address this offseason? You know, I feel like, obviously quarterback defensive end wide receiver like you're gonna hear all of those pretty consistently right i think that you've talked about it a little bit so there has been 
some light shed on it. But I think the secondary is going to be – I think this team needs the secondary to be what's elite about it. Um, they need – finality at strong safety they need to find finality at the corner spot next to aj terrell um i think that you know with the defense that's coming over one of the biggest one of the things i feel like i feel comfortable saying is they're going to have a lot of expertise on the defensive secondary side right raheem morris has experience coaching that jimmy lake has experience coaching that jerry gray when he came over got some you know deserved i think you know, attention for the work he did with the secondary. Um, you know, we'll see what losing Steve Jackson does. But, like, you know, you look at the year Jesse Bates had. You look at A.J. Terrell had a nice year. Jeff Okuda was playing well until I think he got hurt, and then it started to kind of taper out a little bit. But, you know, I feel like they have a lot of brain power on that side of the ball to where I think investing in the secondary is going to be a priority for them because they want to have a no-fly zone, right? Because, again – the defensive front to me is still a work in progress. Okay. Like the, you know, they're going to probably lose Calais Campbell. There's no guarantee that Bud Dupree is going to come back. So I think it's going to be a little jarring for folks to see that group maybe take a little bit of a step back this coming season. Right. Um, because they're going to have to put some new parts and pieces in. It's going to be a different scheme. Ryan Nielsen's specialty was the defensive front. And while I think Jay Rogers is a good coach and has had some good production. And I think that that will help study this a little bit. Um, you know, we're not sure how great Jarrett will be when he comes back from his torn ACL. Um, you know, I think in a very, I don't think this will happen, but you know, if we get, you know, a month away and then they cut Grady Jarrett out of nowhere because they want to clear cap space or they trade him. I don't think that's like 100% impossible. I don't think it'll happen, but like, I think it's very possible this defensive front will take a little bit of a step back and will require some legit investment that will probably take a little bit of time to cook, especially if you take a pass rusher with your first overall pick or your, your first rounder. But I think that looking at that secondary is going to be really important. The other position that I think that will get some major work will probably be tight end because I'm expecting that John New Smith will probably be cut for cap space reasons. Um, he's a very expensive tight end number two. Everything that's been messaged so far says that they are really going to invest in Kyle Pitts this season and really get him to where he wants to go. Um, so I, I do think that that tight end room could get some pretty big reworking at the depth levels. Um, and I would also watch the offensive line. Uh, I, you know, we don't know what this offensive staff will preference. Obviously, having Dwayne Ledford back is going to be big for any sort of continuity. Um, but center is the one position on offense, like a starting position that I could see there being change over it. Um, because if we're really going into a very pass-heavy system with Zach Robinson, which seems to be what they like to do in the McVay system and, you know, in Los Angeles, what Shanahan's always liked to do is they want to pass. And Drew Dahlman has never been an amazing pass protector. So I could absolutely see them bringing either some meaningful competition in its center or going out and getting like a second rounder if they don't end up trading that pick. Um, you know, the, you could see a surprise there, right? So I would watch, I would watch the secondary for sure. Um, there'll be a lot of free agents that have connections to these guys that I'm sure will be listed in the weeks ahead. I would watch tight end. I would watch Gerald Everett as a possible tight end target who coached. Um, he was coached by the new Falcons tight end coach and with chargers. He has experience in Los Angeles, um, in that offense too. Um, and then I think centers anybody's guess. I think that there's going to be some decisions made this off season that will probably surprise people. And that will probably make people go, huh, I didn't expect that because I think we all think that obviously they'll go get another quarterback. That's a given. Obviously, they'll have to get another pass rusher because of the people that they're leaving and the way that position that position group is continuing to evolve. But I would not be surprised if we get to like April and they draft a cornerback first overall, like with their first overall pick. Like I, I would not be surprised if they invest in the uh, the offensive line more than people expect, right? Or if they go out in free agency and spend pretty heavily on a couple of defensive ends if they go in a wild direction with that first overall pick. I just, I don't know. I feel like expect the unexpected. That tends to me to be like the best overall thing to say. It's just like, we don't know where this is going to go. And please don't sell yourself on a certain path this has to take. Because like, again, you know, I remember when Arthur Smith came over and the entire conversation, the whole off season was on what quarterback they were going to get. And then it ended up being the quarterback they already had. And they ended up taking Cal Pitts. The only thing that I actually feel like will probably happen is I think Gerald Everett is the one name where that would make a ton of sense for a lot of different reasons. 
um, particularly because he's had experience being a starting tight end. If something happens with Kyle Pitts and he gets hurt, you could have him on a much more reasonable salary than what John New Smith is on. Um, and he's had experience with the Chargers coaching staff and the Rams coaching staff. And he's from the Atlanta area. So there's like, there's a lot. And then again, it's not to say that this is also going to happen. I would also watch for safety Taylor Rapp, um, who played in Los Angeles with the Rams on that Super Bowl team. He played for Raheem Morris. He also played at Washington under Jimmy Lake. So he'll be a free agent. He's also from Atlanta. So if I had to point to like two free agents that I would put like little $5 bets on, those would probably be the two. But again, we have no idea. So, but I'm excited. I think this is going to be a fun off season. And I think that there'll be some roster maneuvering we don't expect. I think there'll be some you know, there'll, there'll be some cuts, I'm sure, in the next week or two that will come. So we'll see. I'm excited. I think it'll be fun. And I hope that, you know, listen to Aaron. OK, I do it and it helps. It, it really is good. Like Aaron is the voice in your head that's like, don't eat, don't eat that last donut. That is the voice. And he's like, it's responsible. You may not always want to hear it, but like you need to listen to what he says. Trust me, I've done this a long time. I've had a lot of really bad Falcons takes. Um, please don't ever go back and look at my alcoholic stuff from during the Dan Quinn years. Like it's just, you know, it was a little Pollyannish. But um Aaron, Aaron is like he's he's sometimes the voice you don't want to hear, but he will tell you what you need to know. It's like you're like the uh you're the green beans of of Falcons coverage. It's like not everybody wants to eat green beans, but it's good for you okay. and you'll feel good. So and like when the Falcons like do something wild at quarterback that pisses everybody off, and Aaron's like, "All right, guys, it's okay. We'll be fine. You know, we'll, we'll live. Um, it, you know, he'll he's it, you got that you got that essence, man. And now that you probably get some heat for it sometimes, but you're usually right. The Belichick thing. Now that I think about it, it's kind of like, okay, yeah, I'm really glad I didn't do that because I probably would have gone poorly. So. You know, I uh, I always pre I, I do listen to Aaron pretty regularly because you know there's just there's a lot of podcasts out there and you know I usually if someone challenges the way I look at something they're usually it's usually a pretty good person to listen to so yeah that's my my personal plug for you Aaron I I, 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 I definitely like to listen to your podcast uh, you know as I'm trying to process my own thoughts so it definitely helps appreciate that appreciate that I'm I'm too humble to to take on the, the title of uh, the green beans of uh, Falcons coverage. <laughs> That's the thing. You got to put that in your AKA segment. Yeah, now. Yeah, like, yeah, I, yeah. You're the green beans. I, you're will, the... I will definitely do that. I will definitely do Good. that. Um, Corey, I appreciate you plugging this podcast for me, uh, but go ahead and plug some of the stuff you're working on this off season. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I, I'm at for the win for my job and it's, it's a great website has everything you could possibly need for sports, pop culture, all that good stuff. So go check us out. Um, you know, also if you're a Falcons fan and you don't read the Falcoholic, you got to get on that because it's the best like reservoir, I think, for just generalized Falcons coverage to read and, you know, to listen to and everything. Um, and, you know, obviously love all the people there. Uh, yeah. And, you know, I'd like to plug um, stepping away from all of this at some points this offseason and not not picking hills to die on because like. You know, they're all made of sand. That's that's what I've learned over the years is that all of these battles and hills people pick, and it has to be this, it has to be that, they will be okay if they don't get Justin Fields. If that doesn't happen and he goes somewhere else, it'll be okay. Like, I'm not, not saying that I think Fields is a very real possibility. I think it'd be great, but potentially, you know, until it like Im immediately fizzles out and, you know, it's a bad take. But, you know, just just I plug your own sanity. That's the thing. Just just remember, this is not that important. It's just football, you know, just please. And be nice to Aaron. I'm sure he's got a lot of people in whatever channels he's a part of that just, you know, he Elon Musk wasn't nice to him. So you just, you know, somebody's got to, <laughs> you know, he, he personally canceled Aaron's Twitter account. It was, it was just like, Man, I tell you what, I really didn't appreciate that guy's take on, uh, I don't know, what's something you've been like, you've really had a dissenting opinion on over the years. Like, I, I, there's just been so much stuff. Like, Oh, the, the, Muhammad Sanu is the first thing that comes up. There we go. Yeah, yeah. It's just like that. Or, um, you know, his Anthony Rush takes or something. Like, that was the, <laughs> yeah, that was the thing. There's always something on Lock on Falcons that you'll never know you're going to hear that'll get you going. So, you know, even though that uh, the tech billionaires aren't fans, that's, you know, that's, it's, it's always a good thing to do. So tomorrow, your first listen will feature Travis Rogers of Locked on Rams talking about the former Rams coaches, now Falcons coaches. It's all part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day.